Greetings. Okay, this is uh, lecture number two. Decisions and tests. Greetings, I bring you God's blessings. My dear friends, God's love penetrates the entire creation. It is a living energy field which rotates in a circular movement. As all spiritual id must move, it must, like all spiritual, it must move in circular completeness. All creatures are searching for this energy. All creatures are searching for this energy field, consciously or unconsciously. The longing for this love will push, pull, spur man and spirit, and according to the knowledge man has, he will understand this longing and consequently adjust his desires and thinking, or he will not interpret these feelings correctly and act upon these stirring impulses in other ways and thereby often slide into mistakes, not realizing actually what this propelling force, this true meaning of these feelings, this search, and thus frequently wrong findings are. But he who has already advanced in his development as to frequently wrong findings, excuse me, God, this is really funny. I am having so much trouble. Let me start over. My dear friends, God's love penetrates the entire creation. It is a loving energy field which rotates in circular movement as all spiritual id must move in circular completeness. All creatures are searching for this energy field, consciously or unconsciously. The longing for this love will push, pull, spur man and spirit. And according to the knowledge man has, he will understand this longing and consequently adjust his desires and thinking or he will not interpret these feelings correctly and he will act upon these stirring impulses in other ways and thereby often slide into mistakes, not realizing actually what this propelling force, the true meaning of these feelings, this search and thus frequently wrong findings are. But he who has already advanced in his development as to understand what these yet inexplicable feelings of longing are has gained a lot because he will also know into which direction he will have to move these feelings, these currents. And then there will be less mistakes, less misunderstanding about the soul's energy, which had just been misinterpreted. The love for God, the longing for God, is the propelling force in each human being. And even those who have not yet found God or think they don't believe in God feel the same powerful currents in their soul. Whoever experiences this absolute transformation in his spiritual development, recognizing God in consciousness, steps into, I will say, a completely new life. All this can take place within one and the same incarnation. And once you've passed through this door, you will live already in a world of more illumination. But there are still many, many other doors to pass through. Most human beings, as a matter of fact, do not understand life on earth. They cannot comprehend its meaning and purpose because they can only see what they can behold with their physical eyes and cannot yet bring their spiritual eye into focus. Therefore, all seems to be meaningless. Their sorrows, their trials, the loneliness, and many other things. And only he who understands that this earth life is one of many learning periods, one link of a long chain, will in the beginning only be able to surmise the coherence. But gradually he will understand life's full meaning so that his goal will no longer be immediate happiness over the fulfillment of his desires, but his goal will be, to, will be directed toward the totality. Thus, it will be easier to carry eventual burdens of this life, thereby passing tests and conditions which will enable him to enter a higher existence and continuous happiness which cannot be taken away by outer or outside sources.
Now, I would like to talk about that group of human beings who has already passed through the first doors and has already recognized the fundamental truths. Even there, we notice that they sometimes do not progress as well as would be possible. And of course, much depends on the free will of the individual where the progress is made at a rapid pace. One just drifts along and may have to reincarnate many, many, many times in order to overcome or fulfill the same thing, experiencing the same all over. Another one who has realized these fundamental truths will work out the consequences within himself and will aim at and strive for his spiritual progress which does not at all mean withdrawal from earthly problems. On the contrary, earthly and spiritual problems are quite closely connected. And an earthly problem is actually the expression of a specific spiritual problem. The only difference is that the solution of a problem is sought from another viewpoint. Only if a problem is solved on the spiritual level can it find a solution on the earth level. We observe frequently that human beings know this or that, but they do not see the connecting point within themselves. They are still searching for God and recognition through more accumulation of outer knowledge, which in itself is good, but it's not sufficient. There must be a continuous momentum of equalization. Knowledge that is acquired must be applied, digested, and evaluated on a personal level within to attain harmony. And real progress requires attacking from two sides. Outer knowledge should be acquired at the same ratio as that which has been previously taken in and that has been digested and assimilated within. And it should not remain theory. It must put, be put to practice. Excuse me, it should not remain theory. It must be the practice that takes root in the personal life. Yes, man needs knowledge about the truths of creation, the spiritual laws, etc., but this is only one part. Don't stop there. Without the other part, digestion within, there will be no harmony in your progress, no real fulfillment, and thus, as a matter of fact, no true progress. Therefore, you have to get acquainted with yourself. I know that sounds really flip, but it's the best, most important sentence of this entire lecture. Therefore, you and me, we have to get acquainted with ourselves. And we have to devote time to ourselves and search ourselves and discipline ourselves, which seems to be very difficult in the beginning. So you have to revise all that which flatters you, which is a subject of self-deceit, and rid yourself of it. Something special and different for each one, yet much is similar on the same, or the same. Nevertheless, when we speak again and again of spiritual progress, it means something very individual for each one of you. And you, my dear ones, search. What is hidden within me? Where do I not yet react in correspondence to the only reality, i.e. spiritual laws, even if ever so deep within me? Where do I lack clarity about a certain thing within? Such self-search should be made at all times, and the man will slowly be able to eliminate that which is not yet right about him. And by the same token, more happiness can descend. But first he has to realize where his inner blocks are. And for this realization, he needs the search in the direction, in, he, excuse me, for this realization, he needs the search in this direction, the will, yes, the true will and the effort. And if you lack happiness in this or that area, you may be sure that it is directly or indirectly connected with such a personal inner block. And if all your wishes could be granted just so, without having removed those inner blocks, they would never make you really happy. No, you could not build lasting happiness. It would disappear again. Only when you have achieved inner happiness, when the relationship to God is really harmonious, and that his laws are met within, only then the soul is enough matured to experience happiness and harmony. Man often asks himself, yes, I believe that such a connection to God's world is possible, but what do I need? What do I need it for? For what purpose? 
And here I would like to say that such connection can give the one part which is necessary for further development, the intake from outside sources. Furthermore, it gives hints, help, and points out the direction for the search, for the finding and the application of the outer knowledge for inner benefit, i.e. the second requirement for development. For this, man always needs encouragement. He needs strength. He needs blessings besides the concrete help, which may also be given. And very rarely there are some great human beings who have this knowledge and man will be guided to them. And also in such cases, as well as with a medium. God's world is at work and the human being involved is more or less an instrument of God's world. In the one case, it is inspiration. In the other, it is more direct. But help from the outside, this way or that way, constitutes an important part without which it does not work. It should be considered material to work with, enabling you to use. It should be considered material to work with, enabling you to use and evaluate your life to the best possible extent. So in my last lecture, I briefly touched the subject that man has to make decisions during his life. And I was asked how man will possibly know what the right action is. And I would like to discuss this now. Among other things, it is just that, it is just that which man has to learn in life, even if it sometimes appear to be difficult. Many human beings are to make a decision outwardly. Some cannot even do this, but a great number of human beings cannot do it inwardly. They are absolutely unable in their emotional currents, in their inner emotional reactions, to make a decision. They are not even aware of it because it is all covered up. And only after they begin to search for their innermost motivations and emotions will they have to realize what their inner attitude has been up to that point. Then they can start making decisions from within. So this lack of inner decisiveness does not only express itself at all times in problems apparently involving other people, but sometimes just per se an inner attitude, feelings, and reactions. It is not possible right now and here, also due to lack of time, to outline the effects, but there will also be an opportunity so that those friends will understand this better who are not in personal healing contact, which enables them to recognize these inner currents through the help given on a personal level. So those among you who cannot very well imagine what these emotional decisions are should wait. The knowledge will be provided in time to come, and I will now continue to give a few more details about the subject of being able to make a decision. Sometimes, especially a human being who is striving his best, trying to be just, hesitates to do something that might not please God for fear it could be a wrong decision. Thus, he does not decide at all. And it is obvious that he does not understand that not deciding is a decision in itself because somehow this attitude will be of some effect since the world and that which you call time does not stand still. Everything moves on in this flux of life and whatever you do, even your not doing is consequential. And if man shies away from deciding, it means that in his own soul he has not yet found a certain key. He lives maybe not always conscious of it in a fear and he does not steer the ship of life and believes, hopes, again, not conscious of it, that God or fate will make the decision for him. Once in a while this may be the case, but in general God's world is not permitted to interfere and then because man must learn especially this among other things, he must learn to bear the consequences of his decisions. He must learn to make the effort of breaking through such a dark, confusing, truth-covering cloud by his personal spiritual endeavors, by increasing self-recognition and discipline, which alone strengthen his spiritual sight. And only then can he uncover what is buried in his own soul, as he will also be able to see what is going on outside of himself. It is essential for him to learn to look over the whole, be it the most complicated situation, including all that which is at stake for him or others. He must learn to extract the maximum of spiritual development and purification from solving such pending problems. All this requires a tackle the problem with courage attitude. 
not one that is evasive, postponing, stick the head in the sand. And if after careful comp contemplation, man finds that he is not yet able to make a decision because the right decision is not yet clear, it is quite something different. Then he should continue to ask God for more recognition and be willing to accept it and then act accordingly when recognition has been granted through personal effort. It is one thing to shy away from a decision, cover up all which is connected with it, and then turn away from the problem altogether. And another thing to reach out for the truth, contemplate it, and then fully aware, as an act of will, decide not to make a decision as yet until after more personal effort, rec recognition of the right decision is granted, and which is truly the right decision, leaving no doubt whatsoever within, thus increasing inner peace and happiness of the soul. So man is able to find the pure truth of a situation, the right decision resulting from it, but only if he removes all self-flattering cloaks, as well as everything that nurtures his indolence, the path of least resistance. Only he has liberated himself in such a way, has removed the obstacles blocking the truth. Only he who has liberated himself in such a way has removed the obstacles blocking the truth. It is especially this that is expected of man. He is able, of course, but not without effort and not without the sincere willingness and stamina. If man goes through life avoiding certain decisions, it creates reactions and chain reactions, resulting in a new form, a mark, and in his next life, it will be much more difficult yet to solve this knot and to learn about making decisions. Contemplate these words. And even from your short-sighted human viewpoint, not deciding is of greatest detriment, not only spiritually, but also plain earthly speaking. Yet, even from your purely selfish viewpoint, if you try not to be quite as short-sighted, you have to build your happiness yourself and that you learn to be fully obedient to spiritual laws. Without that, there is no gain. And that is lecture two. And I'm not going to do the question and answers, but there you go. And we're losing the light. So, okay.